Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to Office Hours with Michael Kitsis. So today I want to talk about the, the conferences that we attend as financial advisors and the uh, the sessions we tend to see at those conferences. And, and frankly, I think some of the challenges that uh, conference organizers go through in, in trying to figure out what kind of content should be offered at a, at a financial advisor conference for us. So t- today's question comes from Jenny, and Jenny says, uh, Michael, we're working on our annual chapter symposium, and our board is having a debate about whether to include practice management sessions or not. As you know, practice management is ineligible for CFPCE, and there's concern that if not all the sessions offer CE, it will hurt our attendance. But don't advisors need help in running their businesses too? What do you think? So, great question, Jenny. This is, uh, frankly, an issue I've dealt with a lot over the years myself, both uh, as a former FPA chapter president, so I, I dealt with this in planning for our own chapter symposium, and also because as a, as a speaker, I have, frankly, both technical content and practice management content, and have a lot of conference organizers ask me about whether I think the, the practice management content that is ineligible for CE might hurt their attendance or not. Now, on the plus side is someone that also goes and speaks at 60-something, 70-something conferences every year. I've seen a lot of different events and different ways to handle this challenge. So here's my take on it. I think a lot of conferences over the past several years have dug themselves into an awkward hole when it comes to their content. And and the problem is that, frankly, they didn't do a very good job on the content in the past. Uh, Maybe the conference task force had limited resources to find good speakers. Uh, Maybe they just couldn't afford to get good speakers and unfortunately got some bad ones. Uh, In a lot of situations, the problem is that the event relied on sponsors paying for speaking slots to fund the event. And then some of the sponsors sent bad speakers who didn't really educate. They just pitched their product from the podium. But whatever the reason, uh, not knowing good speakers, not being able to afford good speakers, or having sponsors that abuse speaking slots, there are a lot of conferences that are are now basically known for having uh, frequently mediocre content, shall we say. Now, wearing my hat as an advisor, when I look at whether to go to a conference, I decide primarily based on whether I think it's going to be useful content. I mean, if I'm going to pay, and more importantly, I'm going to take time out of my day, I want to get something of value. Now, ideally, sure, in a world where I need at least 15 hours of CFPC every year to maintain my certification, I'd like to get CE also. But but here's why this matters. Because what it means is if the content is good, I'm going to go for the content. If the content turns out to be bad, I can always say, hey, at least I got some CE credit. So in other words, at, at best, It's good content and CE credit. And at worst, I wasted an hour of my life, but at least I get some CE credit as a consolation prize. Now, the problem with conferences that have a history of bad content is that their audience is is frankly assuming it's probably going to be bad. And so now the only reason to show up is CE content. And now suddenly the, the best case scenario is, well, at least I'll get the CE consolation prize, which means we see these audience feedback forms that say, I'm attending because you offer CE. And, and it, it's and, uh, because at least a bad hour of content that's eligible for CE fulfills the CE requirement. If you're going to offer bad content and not even offer CE, it's just a wasted hour of my life I can never get back. And so that makes practice management content especially challenging because the practice management content isn't eligible for CE, which means the stakes are really high. The session better be good or relevant because there's no CE consolation prize coming. But here's the key point to recognize, though. It's not actually about the CE. It's about the content. When the content is good, the questions about CE go away. And and I've watched that happen with one conference after another. No one asks about CE when they're going to see a speaker or a topic they're excited to see and they want to see and it's relevant to their needs. We ask about CE when we're expecting or worrying it's going to be bad content because we want to make sure that at least we're going to get the consolation prize. Which means if you're organizing a conference, the key isn't to figure out whether your content lineup is all eligible for CE. The key is to make sure that your content lineup is good content. Because advisors, we take our time to pay for high quality content. And whether it's technical content or practice management, I frankly, mathematically, if you can give good practice management content that really helps me improve my business, I get a better ROI from practice management content with no CE than I do from technical content. 
that's why one of the kind of the secrets for the speaking world in our industry is that uh, if you want to get paid for practice management content, you go to a broker dealer event because broker dealers are actually much more likely to pay for practice management content because from the broker dealers perspective, if you know two percent of the advisors have a two percent increase in growth rate and you magnify that across the entire organization, you get an amazing return on investment for the conference to pay for practice management content. Now, sure, those advisors need CE true, but the the truth is that 15 hours of CE actually isn't really that much to get. I mean, not in today's world where there's so much CE out there. You can you can get it free from a lot of sponsors. You can choose from like dozens or hundreds of conferences now. So many that you know we publish our list of top advisor conferences every year. And heck, you can get CFP CE credit from the member section on Kitsis.com for reading Nerd's Eye View blog. So I, the reality, CE is a commodity. Good content is a differentiator and real value for a conference. And, and that's why we see the conferences that focus the most on the content are often the ones that spend the most on the speakers and are the ones that are growing the most. So that's events like uh, AICPA's Personal Financial Planning Conference, FPA NorCal, Income Private Wealth. And what you'll notice about those conferences is that there are virtually no sponsored sessions anywhere on the agenda because unfortunately sponsored sessions tend to have the worst hit rate or the worst miss rate for being bad content. Speakers get on the agenda based on the merits of their speaking abilities and the relevance and the value of their content. And the irony of that, although I guess it's not really ironic when you think about it, is that by eliminating those sponsored speaking slots, those conferences actually generate some of the highest sponsorship revenue for conferences of their size. Because when the content is valuable, we as advisors show up. And when we show up, the sponsors want to be there even if they don't get a speaking slot. In other words, the the events that are the least focused on CE and giving the fewest opportunities for sponsors to speak are the ones that are growing the most, getting the most growth in advisor attendance and the most growth in sponsorship dollars. Because the value isn't the CE. It's been and building a conference with mediocre content where CE is the consolation prize because that's not sustainable as a lot of conferences now with declining attendance are, are learning. It's not about giving away the CE. It's about giving good content. And at that point, the CE is just a bonus. Now, with all that being said, I think it's worth pointing out that even with really good content, even with really good practice management content, most conferences will never get the same turnout for a great practice management session. And the reason isn't because practice management content is ineligible for CE. And, and, and it's not because uh, practice management content isn't great because some of it really is. It's because practice management content just isn't relevant for as many advisors. I mean, I think about it for a moment. Let's imagine you've got one of the industry's leading experts to talk about how to maximize the value of your advisory firm as you get ready to sell it. So you've got uh, David Grau or Dave DeVoe or Dan Sievert or Philip Palaviv uh, out to talk about valuing your advisory firm. Now, those are great speakers. That's a great practice management topic. I'm sure the content will be good. And I guarantee you the turnout is going to be small. Because maximizing the value of your advisory firm in a sale just isn't relevant for most advisors. If you're in your 20s or your 30s or your 40s or maybe even your early 50s, you're still so far off from being ready to sell your firm, you're probably not going to take the time to go to that session. Or even if you're of an age where you are maybe getting closer to retirement and winding down your firm, not all advisors own their own firm to be able to sell it. Uh, you know, even the industry benchmarking studies are now showing that in the RA community, there are actually more employee advisors than there are owner advisors. And, and even amongst owner advisors, some of them are minority partners. They're already part of a succession plan or, or some are experienced advisors getting ready to sell, but they already have a succession plan. So the number of advisors who might go to that session on selling your practice who are at the right age and the right business stage and the right role of the business for a great session just isn't going to be that many advisors. Even for a great speaker, it's just not going to have a great turnout. And and the same is true really of almost any practice management session you can think of. Uh, a great session of advisor technology, not relevant for a lot of advisors or broker dealers who don't get to pick their own technology. A uh, great session on marketing and finding your advisory niche, not relevant for all those CFPs who are still para planners and associate planners and don't have marketing and business development responsibilities. Uh, a great session on how to turbocharge the growth of your advisory firm, not relevant for all those advisors who've decided to run a lifestyle practice instead. And, and the list just goes on and on. The, the, the practice management content just tends not to be as widely relevant to as many advisors, at least not compared to a lot of technical content, right? Because if there's a new tax law, 
everyone needs to know how the new tax laws work. It doesn't matter whether you're an experienced advisor or a new one, an advisory firm owner or an employee, whether you have a succession plan or not, whether you're a lifestyle practice or a growing practice. If there's a new tax law, you need to know how the tax laws work. And that's the real distinction. Technical content tends to span across business models and different business types and career stages, at least for a lot of technical content. But practice management content tends to be very specific to a particular business model and career stage and age. And so practice management sessions virtually always get lower turnout unless they're truly relevant across the spectrum. You know, maybe something about broad-based industry trends that's really relevant for everyone. The rest, it gets a lower turnout. And it's not because it lacks CE. It's because it just isn't relevant to as many people. But here's the, the key point. That doesn't mean that conferences should avoid practice management com content for the conference organizers. I, you know, because for the people at Impact's, it does matter a lot. I, for a lot of us, our, the, the cost of an entire conference can be made in one good practice management session. One key takeaway that I can take back that materially impacts my business and changes the trajectory of the business is incredibly valuable. But if you're a conference organizer, you might want to put that practice management session in a breakout so there's something else to go to for all the advisors who don't find that particular session relevant. Or, or have a time slot with a lot of different practice management sessions So uh, for maybe different career stages and business models. So if you're going to have a session on growing your firm, also have one on how to advance your career as an employee advisor for those who don't grow, own their firm. Or uh, if you're going to have a session on choosing technology, also have a session on personal productivity for all those advisors who don't get to choose their tech and they want something else that's more relevant for them. Now, uh, again, if you if you put not so relevant practice management content into a general session when it really isn't valuable for most attendees, you know what you're going to hear is feedback. We want more CE. But it's not because the advisors necessarily want or need more CE. It's because they're pissed. They spent an hour in a session that was irrelevant and they didn't get the CE consolation prize. And so basically the feedback form says, if you're going to offer crappy, irrelevant content, at least give me CE. But it's not about the CE. It's, been not, it's because the content wasn't relevant or, or maybe the speaker just wasn't very good. Because again, when the practice management content is good and relevant for everyone, the lack of CE just isn't a big deal. So Jenny, getting back to your original question, my advice to you is not to worry about whether the content is eligible for CE. Worry about whether the speaker is actually any good and how relevant the content is to the whole audience. If, if the session is really only relevant to a subset of advisors, do the session, don't worry about the CE, but put it in a breakout slot with an alternative that's relevant for the rest of the audience. And then if it's truly relevant for everyone, then you can put it in a general session. And either way, make sure you actually try to find a good speaker. You know, see if anyone else on the chapter board or the conference committee or even just amongst the chapter members has has ever seen the speaker and, and can attest to whether they're actually a good speaker or not. Uh, some speakers even have demo videos or uh, can give you a copy of something that they presented and was recorded at another event. Or So there's something to check out as a sample. Heck, a lot of the time, if you just search for uh, a speaker's name on YouTube, you can find at least some recording of something they've done publicly and get some sense as to whether they can communicate clearly and with confidence. But the bottom line is just to recognize that as CE becomes more and more commoditized and accessible from more and more places for free or at least cheap, the value is not the CE and, and the demand for CE is really not a demand for CE. The value is the content the demand for CE is the consolation prize for bad content. But don't focus your energy on, on finding content that gives nice CE consolation prizes. Focus your energy on finding good, valuable, relevant content. So I hope that helps as some food for thought. Uh, this is Office Hours with Michael Kitsis, 1 p.m. East Coast time on Tuesdays. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and have a great day.